The Roman political strategy was very much like the one we experience in the modern Western world. The Romans, because they had conquered so much territory, developed a way of tolerating all kinds of faiths and beliefs. The modern word would be pluralism. They tolerated all kinds of things, as long as there was an overall structure of law and order, and a basic acknowledgement of the emperor. The effect was that as long as people acknowledged the system as having authority over them, then they could believe and practice all kinds of things. We can recall that St Paul is quite positive about being a Roman citizen. He can see the value of a system that held everybody together. It is the forerunner of our modern notion of a legal framework, within which everybody has their human rights. Of course, we have boiled it down not just to groups and sects and religions, but to individuals who can really behave and believe as they choose, so long as together we can maintain a civilised way of relating to each other. People want peace and not violence and war. Pilate was governor within this kind of universalising holding framework. It was radically inclusive and depended upon the rule of law though there were numerous gradations. Society was very hierarchical and citizenship was limited, as we know from St Paul's epistles. In this week's text, the Jews who have held their religious trial of Jesus come to Pilate as representing the political power. They do not want to break their ritual discipline on this holy day by closely associating with pagans. The Jews had very high standards about their religious identity. Pilate was a pagan. He understood their religious concerns and he generously came out and stood on the pavement and talked with them on more neutral ground. It is interesting that these Jewish leaders do not want to join up with a rival group. We noted that at their religious trial they did not want any other groups joining with themselves. Their religion demanded the maintenance of strict boundaries. Peter had been sucked into that way of doing religion. Yet, under pressure from a wider understanding of religious faith, those Jewish leaders are willing to seek support and alliance from the pagan political power. We can observe a small group that is fearful of change, thinks it has the answers, wants to control religious law and order, and now comes to Pilate as the one who controls political and civic law and order in order to have Jesus put to death to crush the threat of this broader view of faith. They too say he is a criminal, but their law does not allow them to put people to death. Any wise political system keeps the death penalty out of religious hands, as we can observe today. We are horrified when in some Middle Eastern countries the death penalty is used to uphold religious values in instances which we would handle through the political channels of law and order. The text reminds us that Jesus has indicated the kind of death he was to die. We need to think about this fact. It is rather important. If the Jews had killed Jesus, he would have been stoned. Religion buries people in a heap. It has tended to obliterate heretics and enemies. Jesus knew that if he was to die, he had to be lifted up high so that everybody could see him. Jesus' death is not to be religion overcoming him and burying him, as we do with so many things and people we dislike. His death was to be a public event for all to see, Jews, Greeks, Romans, everybody. He was lifted up for the citizens of the world, in terms of politics, to look at and to make a decision about. Every citizen is now on trial because he is lifted up. If they had buried him in a corner as part of a religious dispute, he would not have made the appeal that he is able to make to us today. Pilate is going to be the one who authorises this death on a cross, Jesus being lifted up. He begins the trial with a political question. He says, are you a king? That is, 
are you making a rival power claim? There were plenty of precedents involving religious leaders and groups who claimed to be the pure people and wanted to expel the Romans and liberate their country for God's true purposes. A few years before, Pilate had crucified 1,800 people along the roadside in order to give a clear message that rebellion was not a sensible thing to try. He was a very tough operator. Therefore, he begins the trial of politics with a very obvious question. Are you king? Are you trying to take over and clear us out of your country? Jesus replies by stating that his kingdom is not of this world. We need to consider this conversation carefully. Jesus is offering a very different perspective. If you think of Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God, not height or depth or breadth or anything. He is talking about the creator of the universe, of everything that is, of political systems and anti-political systems, of religions and anti-religions. His kingdom represents the creator of everything. There is a similar picture in St John's great revelation about the heavenly city coming down, embracing all the people in salvation. Jesus' kingdom is the salvation of all that God has made, called to be raised up into glory and fulfilled and confirmed in its proper purpose. The method that Jesus has employed is not that of force, making people do things as Pilate had to do. His method is an appeal to the heart. It is an internal issue, a calling out to be a citizen of heaven, the kingdom of heaven we are told by Jesus to pray for each day. Politics will come and go. Jesus said that we will always have the poor with us. We will always be dealing with the problems of being human. And yet, in all this mysterious struggle, there is something in every creature that will draw us through those temporary things into glory and into eternity. The method is an appeal to the soul, to the heart, that deep instinct to live beyond the limitations of this life with its fighting, its fear, its temporary hopes and joys. Those are the signs of things we go through in order to enter into eternity. These are the elements of real human belief that we want to examine more thoroughly as part of this Lenten journey. Pilate gets a glimmer of this agenda and its significance when Jesus says, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. There is a deep spiritual connection between this human instinct for eternity and the words of Jesus. In response, Pilate asks the famous question, what is truth? Here is a politician who knows how to ask the question, what is truth? But he cannot see it when it is in front of him, because he thinks that truth is an intellectual proposition, or a set of ways of working, or a scientific theory you can prove. Whereas truth is what is in the human heart, that which Jesus calls out, the invitation to acknowledge the instinct for eternity. Pilate knows that this is an important question for politics. What is truth? but he wants a superficial, immediate, quick fix. The demands upon politics to maintain law and order often prevents there seeming to be time to recognise this deeper agenda. This serves to make politics relative and always temporary and always behind the curve. We tend to live our lives in this more immediate way too. Paradoxically, Jesus is saying that truth is learned in silence, in inner contemplation. It is not a system of theories or organisation. Poor Pilate is in a fix. Here is this man, is he a king? He has used the word king, but in a different way. He claims that he is raising an issue about truth. Pilate is not sure what truth is. What do politicians do when they are in a fix? They offer people a choice. You have a referendum or a review if you don't know what to do. 
Thus, as a consummate politician, skilled in the primary art of surviving in the present and not really engaging with the more intractable issues of ultimate meaning and purpose, Pilate shifts the agenda and says, I always release someone at this time. Do you want Jesus or Barabbas? He puts the responsibility on somebody else, on the people, not on himself. Should I crucify your king? And here the Jewish people, represented by this tiny, self-serving group, commit a terrible blasphemy. Because they know David is their king, that the line of David is the kingly line. And of course Jesus is of the line of David. Yet they say, the emperor is our king. What an irony for this holy group that has refused to come off the pavement into the headquarters because they will be ritually defiled and are bold enough to claim that the emperor is our king. That is the person who we worship in a sense of law and order. By contrast, this imposter, through the line of David, should be put to death. In this text from St John, we have a dramatic picture of politics on trial. We are given a description of a politician not taking responsibility, but passing it on to others. And our old friend, public opinion, makes the decision. The crowd makes the decision. It is a decision that is defensive, pragmatic, designed to stop anything new happening. It aims to keep the vision restricted to the useful and the practical to what we can see today and hope for tomorrow. There is no big vision, no heart soaring, no real desire for a greater perfection. Then Pilate says the great words, here is your king. He presents Jesus and then he says, you take him, you put him to death. Is this big government placing the responsibility on what we have all come to call localism? Pilate says, you do it, if that is what you want. You go in your little group and decide what you want to do. If you want to kill him, you kill him. Let the local, the contextual, decide upon appropriate values and priorities. The political test is to maintain a peaceful framework of law and order, in this case, through the violence of an innocent death. Politics is on trial. And Pilate is trying to keep the peace. He is frightened of the big picture. He can only deal with what he can control through force in the immediate present. This big confusing picture of human hearts and the glory that envelops everybody and a future with which God desires to grace people is just beyond his political imagination. And so he says, over to you. You deal with it in your own way. Politics is on trial around the issue of responsibility. Pilate is a politician not willing to take responsibility for truth, nor for decision-making. He is the willing tool of public opinion, the will of the people who shout loudest. Public opinion is most powerful and effective when it is united in a negative judgment, a common enemy. This localised, popular approach is acted out in the second stage of the trial of politics, Jesus being put on trial by another king, Herod. This is the account in our text from Luke. Herod represents politics as localised and as based upon experience and evidence. He is a person like many in the West today, intelligent, self-satisfied, well-off, mildly interested in religion, able to order much of his life as he chooses. His main interest is in the latest sensation, in this case, the phenomenon of Jesus. Political responsibility is exercised by asking for evidence to substantiate the claims he thinks that Jesus is making in his use of the language of kingship. In the memorable words coined by Tim Rice in the pop opera Jesus Christ Superstar, Herod in effect says to Jesus, Prove to me that you're no fool. Walk across my swimming pool. An echo of the miracle of walking on the water. 
but as a personalised sign for this particular audience. Politics in this mode will only support things that add value to what we already have in a demonstrable way. Herod also questions Jesus at some length. He is interested in the agenda of a new kingdom, but Jesus remains silent. There can be no real communication between human politics based upon evidence of added value and the mysterious power of a citizenship based upon sacrifice of self and putting faith, hope and love before intellectual understanding. Two worlds and two languages are unable to connect because of the driving self-confidence of Herod's political leadership in dominating the agenda. The contribution of the chief priests and scribes is equally nervous and partisan, condemnation. This is a trial with no examination of the issues, simply a continuation of the defensive choice to maintain the status quo, which has been formed between political and religious leaders. Both the political and the religious trial is instant, no space for reflection, or receiving anything new. The tenet of engagement is mocking and humiliating the one who is different. This is the classic form of humour in politics. Yet neither Pilate nor Herod find Jesus guilty. Politics has been on trial and found wanting. However, politics is willing to tolerate this funny king, even if he need to be contained by being mocked and marginalised. Thank you.